All right, so today we are going to put a new ripcord in the 800 Dragon mod sled. Uh, this one's starting to fray up a little bit here. So we're going to get started. The first thing you have to do is remove the can. Um, I may remove the whole pipe too just to get it out of the way, but one thing at a time. So I'm going to start off just by pulling these springs. Um, I kind of just made that out of an old screwdriver, bent the tip on it. Nice and easy, a little easier than using pliers. And these springs can be kind of a complicated thing to pull here. They are under quite a bit of tension. But I'm going to give it a shot. These ones are kind of rusty. So I don't know, I might actually have to use pliers. I don't know if that bend will hold. Wow, it's rusted on there good, actually. Uh, let me try something a little bit different. Okay, so sometimes you just need a bigger tool for the job. This is basically just a, a typical vice grip. Um, it's Mac, but I mean, you know, any vice grip will do. So I'm going to brace this with my knee because this is on wheels. And just kind of separate that. I'll leave that hanging on there so I don't lose it. There's one on the back side here too. I'm just going to clamp on. Give it a stretch. There we go. That one went flying. Gotta watch out for these. They uh, do go flying, so I'm just gonna set them aside actually instead of leaving them hanging there. That way I don't lose them. And there's two more down here on the bottom. These ones don't actually look that bad. Oh yeah, those came right off. This might be an aftermarket can in this. If it is, I wasn't really aware of it. But we're about to find out. So there's those four springs. And get this thing out of here. Take a look. Oh, she's in rough shape. Good thing I got that full SLP that I'm going to be popping on here in the near future. All right, so that's off. There. That might be an SLP as well. It just looks like it's uh, a little beat up. So I'm not sure if you guys can really see this. You get down here, this is your recoil. So it looks like just a couple of Allen heads holding on. Um, some in the back there that look a little tricky to get to. But you know what? I think I can manage. So what I always do is I put a clamp on the hose here, or on the, uh, the line here so it can't recoil, and then I pull the handle off. I do that before I take it off. But this is a little tighter than what I'm used to, but We'll give it a try anyways. Looks like I can get to all of them quickly, easily. Might have to do something with that bump stop though. All right, not too, too bad. There's my chain case. That'll be coming out as well when I change the track over on it. This one has a slotted rotor because it's a Dragon package, cross drill. I'm going to get started on that. Alright, so just broke out a set of metric T-handles. I'm not entirely sure what size these are. I'm thinking probably a 5. Yep, they are. So I'm going to go around and actually crack them all free. Ah, well, they're definitely in there, though. Now, some of these I don't think I'll be able to get to with these T-handles, which could generate a bit of a problem. But I will say, using Allen heads is a better design. The skidoo rev I had, they used uh, Phillips head screws. And it was a disaster to try to get those out of there. I ended up replacing them with that one screw, so I'm kind of glad they went this route. So I'm going to go around, break all those free, then I'll take them completely out. But I always like to clamp this line first so it won't spin into it. Alright, so just a quick update. Um, there's a little bump stop in these you have to remove to get to the last Allen screw to get it out. Um, it's basically just to keep the engine from rocking back and forth. Just held in by two 10 millimeter bolts at the top. Um, I didn't even know it was there, but not too hard to yank it out. So just pulled it out. Now I'm gonna finish uh, pulling the rest of these off. We'll be ready to string a new cable through it. So I know a lot of you are sitting there probably like, wow, it's the middle of July. Why are you worrying about your sled now? Well, I actually just kind of like working on these things. Um, my last one was a Skidoo Renegade. 
X package. Uh, it was a lot easier to do a chord on that, by the way. Um, I don't know, these Dragon chassis are a little bit difficult to work on, but they seem all right. A little heavy, but they seem okay. So I'm just going to keep going, yanking this stuff out. Go from there. Okay, so I've got all but two of the screws out of this. Um, I left two in there just to hold it in place. And what I'm going to do, remember I said you want to clamp this line off. I'm going to show you why. I'm going to actually cut this handle. So I'm going to pull this to here. Put a clamp on it right there so it can't go anywhere. Just kind of snake this out through. Um, a lot of people would try to untie that, but replacing the damn thing anyways. What the hell's the point? So I'll cut that off. I got my handle. All right. Just snake that down through. So that's pretty much the reasoning for that. You just want to have a little slack there so when you pull it off, the thing doesn't just spiral up and suck all your cord up into it because that will just make it more difficult to change in the long run. Alright, so last two bolts, I'm going to buzz them off. Definitely helps having the right tool. Some of these Allen screws are hard to get to. I've gone from a T-handle to a socket with an Allen head on it to basically just using the old impact driver. This is the best bet though, nice and straight line. So I'll spin these last couple screws out. We'll get this thing off of here. They definitely don't come easy. that one. There is a coolant hose in the way here. It's, uh, there's enough slack in it you can move it around. Uh, it's not really a big deal that it's in the way. It's just something worth mentioning. Uh, the most difficult part so far was actually getting that, um, that motor bumper off of there. Or dampener, whatever they call it. So that should be all of them. That last one. That one's in there pretty good too. There it is. So basically what I do now, now that I have it off, is you pull it all the way out um, and you just cut it at this end too but you want to clamp this in there so what I'm going to do is where this is vented I'm going to stick some screwdrivers in there so it stays in place so I can just fish it through under tension tie the knot and then uh, the last probably two feet I'll put this clamp back on and I'll recoil it right into it oh, I'll actually show you basically you just want to pull it all the way out make sure that's at a spot I can get it Right there. Let's undo that. Because you want to be able to fish the new one in through it too. So clamp that in place. So now that's not going anywhere. Once I cut that, obviously it would just spin back up. So I'm going to stick some stuff in there to hold it in place. So I can just kind of snake a new, uh, a new one right through. In fact, I think these T-handles will work pretty well. Snapping. So there we go. And it didn't hold it too bad. So I just used the T handle to kind of lock it in place. Although I might try to tighten that just a bit more. See if I can pull it just a little closer. Personal preference, mostly. Right there. Let's see if I can wedge one through there. There we go. use the uh, T-handle to kind of hold that in place. Now I can just kind of push this through, cut that nut off, and string my new rope through. Um, you can actually just take this off and 
rewind it around it. Um, kind of a pain in the ass. But, I mean, the whole job's kind of a pain in the ass in general. So, I don't know. I've always just done it this way. It's easy. Even with lawnmowers, I do it this way. I mean, not a big deal. So, there we go. I'm just going to pull this through. Like that. It's out. It's still under tension. So, I'll fish the new one through. Tie a knot in it. And then I can let this ravel back up. So, I'm going to go grab my new one. Hang on one second. And it's worth mentioning, these uh, dragons run a seven foot pole cord, not a six and a half. Um, this is my first Polaris dragon. Uh, when I went in this morning, I said, yeah, I just need a seven foot pole cord, or a six and a half foot pole cord. The guy was like, oh, what's going on? And I was like, ah, oh, Polaris dragon. And uh, he kind of informed me, and I was like, are you serious? So yeah, I gotta grab a hook to pull that up through, and then we are gonna be good to go. Right, just broke out my picks. Let's see what I'm going to need here. Probably just a standard hook would do. Let's see. That should be the trick. Just a typical hook. Um, pretty much most of the tools I'm using are Mac or Snap-on. Um, there are some cheap tools that are great. Don't get me wrong. Um, but I just happen to have these ones at my disposal. So that's what I'm going with. Go. Just use my hook to pull that through. And you pretty much just tie a basic square knot in these things. Uh, pretty much anything will hold though. And really that would hold, in all honesty. Uh, in fact, that's probably all I'm going to go with. Get it nice and tight, just because this hole isn't too big on this. I don't want to go with an exceptionally large piece. Alright, so just a quick knot in it, pull it down through, and I always just tuck this little extra piece in here. Uh, you can cut it off too, but it's not really going to interfere with anything. Um, so, not sure how well you can see this, but uh, I've got my new pole cord strung through. Um, it was pretty easy to do. So, remember that clamp I just had? I'm going to clamp that off at about two feet. And then I'm going to let this coil up. Hopefully I can let it coil rather slowly. Okay, so. Just do that. Oop. So, let her coil to about there. Now I leave this two feet because i got to string it back through and put my handle back on. So, now you see I just got it through, put a little knot in it, tucked it into its little space. She's good to go. So I'm actually ready to start putting this back on now. Um, pretty easy. And like I said, you can take this out, but it's easy enough not to. So it goes like this. And I don't even know if I left it up here, but I'm going to give it a shot. Worst case scenario, I can always just pull it out a little extra far. Which actually, you know what? I'm going to do that anyways, just because I always like having a little extra room to work with. So even after it's bolted on the sled, it'll still coil up. through my handle and uh, again just you know use your hook whatever pull it up through get a knot in it real easy just do a quick little knot so it doesn't go anywhere and uh, don't really worry about these coming undone um, because quite frankly it won't unless you pull on it just right which you're not going to do unless you're trying to take it off but and look at this, I can, I can bench 320 pounds and I'm not pulling that out of there. So, there's that. I'll just pretty much leave that hanging for now until I can get started back on there. So, this just goes back in here. Remember, you gotta manipulate this radiator hose every which way in the world. But this just kinda sits on there. And you bolt it back together. I'm going to just run one of the top ones as like a pilot bolt. Uh, just because it's real easy to get to. And then I can go around and tighten all the other ones down. 
I actually recommend using one of these. Um, this gear driver is probably the, the best thing for it so far. And I've tried three different techniques here. Don't know why I never thought of one of these before. So I'm not actually tightening this all the way, because this is just kind of a guide. I still want to be able to shift this around, get the other ones in place. I actually want to get them all started before I tighten any of them down. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. I'll get these going in there, and we'll, uh, I'll try them right back in here in just a sec. All right, so new recoil is in right there. Still got it clamped up. I just tightened all the screws down. Uh, so now it's time to put that bumper bracket back in there. That actually tucks in behind there. Can't really see it too well, but see those two small bolt holes there? That's what it screws down into. It's just to stop the motor from rocking. So I'll put that in and I'll let outside and fire it up. All right, there it is. I got that little bracket bolted back in. See that right there, that little bump stopper? So now it's time to uh, release. Then I'll just throw the can back on and fire it up. Nice and tight, good tension. Let's just see here. Catches right about where I want it to. Pretty good. So I'm going to throw the can on, swing this outside, and then I'll uh, fire it up for you guys. Usually it's about two poles, but this thing's been sitting for months now. All right, the can is back in. Sled's pretty much back together, so I'm just going to throw the plastic panels on, take it out, and start it. Um, I'll record it running for you a little bit too. Uh, next video, full SLP pipe install. I've got the can, the pipe, the Y pipe, everything. Um, and then the video after that is going to be the Power Commander 5 um, tuning and then the Power Commander 5 install. Alright, got the garage good and cleaned up. See you guys next week.